Thanks again, and um, thanks for the invitation. So today I'm going to give a sort of a, a little overview of some of the work we've been doing over the last few years um, on trying to understand metastasis better. And it'll be quite a, quite a general overview, so I'll pass over a few things relatively quickly. So I think, as everybody knows now, um, obviously ma metastasis is one of the major causes of cancer and morbidity. And over the last few years, there's been some a lot of interest in the basic biology side in trying to inhibit invasion and metastasis. And I think there's a, a general question of whether inhibiting metastasis really will be a cancer therapy. Um, and like I say, for many years, metastasis was relatively understudied. And I think that was, came about from not really having the model systems to be able to, to, to work in to understand the complexity of metastasis. Um, and so what happened is, as basic biologists, most of us worked in cell biology trying to work out the kind of the mechanics of invasion, the mechanics of motility. And one of the things that we're now trying to do in the lab is really trying to work out if we translate this work on cell culture, migration, and invasion, how does this actually move into a, a metastatic situation? And if we inhibit these processes, uh, do we or do we not see um, an inhibition of metastasis? and specifically liver metastasis. So, okay, so most of you here would be quite familiar within, with this sort of general slide as we think of the development of metastasis as tumors basically evolve from benign. We then, there's a discussion about as tumors grow, um, going through an EMT-like stage, um, escaping from the primary environment, and then once they've escaped into the bloodstream, it is then going to the target uh, organ of metastasis. They have to extravate, they have to squeeze in, and they then have to grow at a secondary site. So, in many of um, many of these um, many of these processes, that we can now model and try to understand. And basically, the hope would be is that we can find um, targetable um, targetable processes within this situation so that we can actually inhibit or, in the end, virtually shrink metastasis. So at the Beatson, we kind of um, study each part of the metastatic cascade, but it's complex and it, it's difficult. And I think as we go forward, we're very, one of the, the key things is to try and work out where our anti-invasive, anti-metastatic therapies are working. So, so we really think we need to really understand the molecules of what they do, and then we can say what step and what cells are we inhibiting. Um, and of course, if we're thinking about liver metastasis, you have to think of the, when the cells are at the site of the liver. And basically, if you look at how the cells spread or grow within the liver um, and, and the morphology they take, and certainly if we think about anti-angiogenic therapy, it is thought that maybe how the, um, the tumor and the metastasis grows within the liver parenchyma might or might not affect um, whether it needs new blood vessels or co-ops the, um, the blood vessels that are there. So just to say, one of the things we've been doing for a long time is really trying to understand how cell migration work. And I think in kind of the basic pro properties, um, we, we, we understand quite a lot. So we know in systems that there are made two major mechanisms which control cell mi migration. One is controlled um, by RAC. So RAC is a... Is a it's an important protein which is involved in mesenchymal cell migration. And another type of migration is, is driven by Rho, and this is what people describe as amoeboids. So these are kind of this sort of round circular um, um, movement. And the, one of the questions is, in an in vivo scenario, would a round amoeboid cell be able to squeeze through and properly metastasize? So we can do things in the lab. We can um, delete um, RAC and Rho from um, in vivo situations. Here we've been looking at um, melanoblasts in vivo. Obviously, these cells migrate around the back of the mouse in a very similar way to melanoma. So we can watch and score how wild-type melanoblasts migrate. And as you can see, they, they whoosh around the back of the mouse. Um, but if we knock out RAC, basically cells really do move much more slowly. And there are a number of RAC inhibitors out there. So in terms of being able to stop the migration of cells, we, we, we can quite easily do this in vivo. So then we also think about invasion. As I say, so there's been a lot of work over the years trying to understand the processes that drive invasion. Um, one of the key things that we've been looking at is how the p53 mutation drives um, invasion. So p53 is mutated, and often p53 accumulates in cancers, and it's been shown that p53 has dominant function, so therefore it's not the same as loss of function. And one of the major things that mutant p53 does is make cells invade. So we can take mice where we've either lost p53 or we have a mutant, and we ask 
can those cells invade? So we do 3D invasion assays, and you can see that where you have a mutant p53, you get a very nice invasion of cells, and when you have a loss of function p53, you don't. And so one of the big things we now do is trying to ask, well, what are the processes that drive mutant p53 invasion, and can we target those? Um, and then, like I say, mechanistically, we have some really good understanding of how these processes work. So we know that mutant p53, for example, really affects how the cells um, migrate using the actin cytoskeleton and, and particularly the integrin pathways. But as we say, these are kind of cell culture or 3D systems. So one of the key things we've been trying to do is work out how relevant are these processes in vivo. And for that, we've been really trying to do two things. So my, my lab have worked for many years on colon cancer, and we've been very keen to get mouse models of colon cancer that invade, metastasize, and really good, good liver metastasis. Unfortunately, these have been pretty hard to do in the mouse, but um, we do think we're getting there. So I think those of you who went to Dave Tuverson's talk um, yesterday or the day before, um, would have realized that within pancreatic cancer, um, obviously this is a, a very bad disease, that within this system um, we have mouse models of metastasis. So as you would have heard yesterday, RAS is mutated in around about 90% of pancreatic cancers and mutant p53 mutations are, 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 are very common as well. So what we can do is take a mouse and into its pancreas put a mutant p53 mutation and a RAS mutation. And these mice will then develop pancreatic cancer that looks very much like the human disease. And importantly, not only does it look like the um, aggressive invasive, these mice predominantly get liver metastasis. So, so, so therefore, this gives us a really good, um, a good way of looking at the processes that control invasion and metastasis and working out which are key and which are limiting within this system. So, so we're very, this is a very useful study. So Dave has been really looking in terms of targeting to try and target tumor therapy. And we've been really using this as a model to try and understand, can we inhibit metastasis, can we suppress metastasis, and can we shrink metastasis? Okay, and we can label our mice with GFP, so therefore we can watch the tumor cells. And by labeling our tumors with GFP, because this is specifically within the tumor cells, we can also detect micrometastatic disease. Okay, so one of the things why we've been having to do this work in vivo is that over the last few years, we all know that the tumor microenvironment is now playing a very key role in, in, in the invasion and metastasis process. So um, one of the key areas that we're looking at is how the collagen and the cross-linking and really the dense stroma of pancreatic cancer um, favors cells to migrate, move, and metastasize, and also how the immune cells which integrate into the cancers are thought to be important again for allowing tumor cells to escape. And in pancreatic cancer, generally tumors are very macrophage rich, but not many other immune cells. So actually it's very hard to, so therefore cells seem to be very attracted to macrophages, but not the other immune system. And so therefore we're looking at a number of processes. So just to give you some examples that we're doing at the Beetson, so we were particular. so in, with Laura Mancheski, we were interested with a, a protein called Fasin. So Fasin is an actin bundling process, so it's very important for making cellular protrusions and help the cells kind of grab on and go through. So we had a Fasin knockout, we crossed it into this this KRAS mutant p53 model, and what you found was a protein important for kind of the, the kind of uh, protrusion actually very efficiently suppresses metastasis in this situation. So here we just have the livers from the, the model RAS and mutant p53, and we see lovely metastasis. When we knock out FASIM, we very strongly protect against um, invasion and the metastasis mice still get aggressive primary tumors. And what you find out is that with, with fascins is that they, the fascin knockouts really very much stop the distant liver mets. And we think this is mainly because the cells really struggle to get out of the tissue. So here we've labeled up a, a cell which is just trying to squeeze out. And it's these sort of protrusions in the normal scenario which is lacking in the fascin, which actually are, is the only major phenotype we can see in this model. So they, these protrusions and grabbing seem to be very important for getting the tumor cells out. So we've been looking at, as I say, there's a number of processes that we think are very important for metastasis. Another one is the inflammation and immune cells. So we've been looking at the role of CXCR2. So CXCR2 is predominantly marking neutrophils and blood vessels and also things called bone marrow-derived suppressor cells. And what we find is that if we look at um, pancreatic cancers, we see a, a very clear um, accumulation of neutrophils at the invasive fronts. And if you have neutrophils at the invasive fronts rather than in the heart of the tumor, this is a poor prognosticator. And we can also find that those patients with very high levels of CXCR2 perform very badly. 
And this just shows you the neutrophil sta um, CXCR2 staining around the leading edge. But we can also show that within the metastasis, we also see very nice um, um, neutrophil or um, neutrophil staining in the metastasis itself. So, we, we, so this seems to be very consistent um, in both human and mice. And the important thing that we can do is knock out CXCR2 or use PET side inhibitors or small molecules, and in all cases, whenever we inhibit CXCR2, we very strikingly um, inhibit the metastatic process. And indeed, if we combine it with gemcitabine in the system, knocking this out means that we, we really do not get metastasis. So, so we are currently going forward with AstraZeneca to see whether we can take this forward because their small molecules have very similar effects. So, that, so I think we, as we understand what these molecules are doing, it then gives us some, some ability to, to think about inhibiting them and protecting against metastasis. Um, the other major um, thing we've been looking at is, as I said, the tissue stiffness and the collagen thickness. Um, so there's what, an enzyme called LOX, which is a lysyl oxidase, and this is very important for cross-linking collagen. And as you would have heard from Dave, the pancreatic cancers have a very stiff, dense stroma, which is thought to be in part um, stopping the drugs getting in. So what we can do is do kind of relaxant therapies and really stop any more stiffness so that you can get um, enzymes, so you can inhibit this enzyme. So if we look at pancreatic cancer, those ones that have high LOX, the patients who have surgically receptible pancreatic cancer do bad. If we go and look at the collagen cross-linking, and we can do this using multi-photon um, microscopy um, on sections, what you find is those tumor that have more cross-linking um, has bad prognosis. And therefore, now that there are a number of blocking antibodies coming through, what we can find is if we inhibit uh, LOX and treat with GEM, again, we don't see too much when we just use LOX on the own, we massively expand survival of these mice with tumors, but we actually completely and utterly block liver metastasis within this situation. And importantly, what we now see into these tumors are an influx of immune cells and stromal collapse. There's not more blood vessels, the stroma seems to collapse. So, so again, as we start understanding these processes, um, we should get better insights into the, the molecules that we are quite keen to inhibit. And just to finish off some work um, which is being led by Jeff Evans in, in, in Glasgow, we've been looking at the role of SARC inhibitors in, in this model and also in the disease. And the, the important thing about SARC, SARC family kinases, are downstream of the integrins and therefore seem to be very important for the invasion and metastasis process. So we can use these inhibitors in in vitro situa situations and stop migration and invasion. And importantly, if we then move into these mouse models and use inhibitors, and this, in case we use disatinib, which is a potent SARC inhibitor, it's also an ABL kinase inhibitor as well. And again, if you go into the mice for, um, and look at metastasis, we can see that we can very strongly block metastatic spread using these, these SARC inhibitors. Um, and again, this seems to be better when we combine it with gemcitabine. And Jeff is currently... Um, coordinating a, a wide phase two trial, which is just closed to see whether disatinib um, gives benefit in, in pancreatic cancers that have locally invasive but not metastatic disease. So just to summarize the work that we've been doing, I think um, we're gradually moving forward in trying to understand the metastatic process much better. Um, as, as we all know, metastasis is very complex. There's a very clear interplay between tumor cells and stromal cells. The tumors, by the stage they metastasize, are very complex. And we really need to understand these better in terms of sequencing and how much they represent the, the normal tumor and the primary tumor and how complex they are. But we're hoping that as we start moving forward, we might be able to find new targets that might allow us to inhibit the metastatic process. And I think one of the things, if we start... I think one of the things to highlight, we seem to be able to inhibit the metastatic process not just by inhibiting the tumor cells, but also by hitting stromal cells. And you might imagine that the mechanisms of resistance will be much less in these non-cancer stromal cells than they are in the cancer themselves. Um, like we say, we think that these may be useful at certain stages of receptible pancreatic cancer and in combination. And I think the other major aim now is to really try and understand the biology of liver metastasis better in terms of what are the elements that allow them to re remain um, therapy resistant and whether we can start learning processes and really getting on top of watching these metastases and seeing if we can shrink them. So that's it from me. So I'd just like to thank everybody. So this, um, this work that I discussed today is a, a teamwork. So it's the Glasgow Pancreatic Team. Um, so these are the guys in the lab, and Dougie and Colin, who are clinical fellows, uh, are here. And this work is jointly led by Jen Morton and, and Jeff Evans. And so we have a number of collaborators. We um, 
number of surgeons that we work really closely with, um, especially Ross Carter and Colin Mackay, and of course we've been since the uh, Australian um, um, integration, obviously with Andrew and David. So I'd just like to thank everybody for their time, and thank you.